Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I am going to be covering the auto-save, how to, uh, how to auto-save on your project. First of all, we talk about like regular saving. If you do some uh, editing in a project, uh, any changes that you make, I'm, I'm, I've got a project open here, I'm just going to grab my audio here and I'm going to move it to the side, and that is technically a change there. So what I'm going to do now, if I want to save, uh, th this is where I've got my project files saved right now. So you've got to be very aware of where you, first of all, where you save your project files uh, before you know what to do with your auto-saving. Uh, what auto-saving does is it's a feature that uh, makes sure that it, uh, if your machine crashes, if something goes wrong on your hard drive, then the software will keep saving copies of your project file in a different location. So if you lose any progress, you can go back and open that project, that auto-save file up, and you can restore uh, some, some of that progress you may have that you may have made and you might may have noticed that, that you may have noticed just a few seconds ago that that the auto save let's go back and look at that there it is right there that is the auto save doing its job right there all right so i've made a change here and uh if i go and I, I've grabbed my audio and I dragged it. And now if you try to close your project here, it's going to say, hey, you have not saved changes to your project. One thing I recommend doing while you're, while you're editing is just every now and then hit Control S. So I made this change. If I hit Control S, that save, it just saved to this project file here and updated my project file with the changes that I've made. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to undo what I did there. Control Z will undo. But Adobe can uh, auto save your project every now and then when you're not even thinking about it. I'm going to go under Edit, and we're going to go under Preferences, and you're going to go under uh, Auto Save. Go under Auto Save. On a Macintosh, this is found under the Adobe Premiere. You type on the uh, click on the Adobe Premiere name, and then you'll go down to Preferences, and you'll find the Preferences under there. So then it's the same path here after you hit Preferences, and you go to Auto Save. Under Auto Save, you have a couple little options here. You've got uh, first of all, automatically save project. This is on by default. You don't have to do anything to uh, to turn this on. It's already there. Uh, but you just want to make sure that yes, that it is it is check marked. They have, in the last couple of years, added this feature where you can save backup project to Creative Cloud. If you'd rather do it to the Creative Cloud, it's actually a little safer going into the Creative Cloud than it is on your own hard drive. Because if you have your autosave location as the same on, on the same hard drive as your main project file and your hard drive dies, you will lose all versions of your project. So it is actually a good idea to actually to save the backup to the project backup project to the Creative Cloud as well. I do this on almost all my projects since they've started doing this. And then at the bottom here, you have auto save also saves current project. If you want Premiere to save your project automatically where you're not hitting Control S or Command S to save your project file, you can check mark this and when it hits the auto save time, it will also save your current project to your uh, main project file here. Because what the auto save does is it saves, I'm going to uncheck that for now, it saves to a specific folder on, on to a specified location, which we'll get, get into here in a minute. But let's go up to automatically save every three minutes. This is not set by this by default. I think it's set by like like 15 minutes, I think. And 15 minutes to me, or even if, if it's 10 minutes, is a lot of work. Uh, when you're really just getting into, ed just really deep into your editing and you've been working really hard for 10 minutes and you have, you have to, if your machine crashes and you have to go back and do 10 minutes worth of work, that's a waste of time. So I change this to every three minutes. I let it save every three minutes. And maximum project versions. I can't remember how many versions uh, the default is, but it's far less than this. It might be like 10 or even less. Uh, you'll notice when you go into your default settings, but because uh, I've always kept this, I always put this at uh, like about 100. Say you're working uh, on one day and then you save your project, you close it, you come back like two days later and start working on it again, and you open it up and you realize that you've made some made some changes that you didn't mean to change didn't mean to change. You can go back to versions 10, 20, 30 versions back and find uh, and import all those and open up all those project files and find where that uh, change that you're looking for was lost. Uh, so this is very helpful to have because uh, these are relatively small files. Every time it, at times it, every time it saves, it, it makes a new project file, which is very relatively small compared to your hard drive. So uh, I would recommend keeping this kind of high around like 100. Maybe that's a bit overkill, but uh, better safe than sorry. So I'm going to hit OK and save that. Now one other thing with autosave is you've got to go to your scratch disks. I'm going to go under File, and we're going to go to Project Settings. Under Project Settings, you'll see this uh, um, option called Scratch Disks. That's basically where it decides to save items, uh, not just for autosaving, but for uh, media and uh, cache files and a whole bunch of other different things. Under your Project Settings, you're going to see, if you move down here, 
uh, under a project autosave right here. Uh, by default, it is set to save your autosave uh, files to the to the same location as your project file. I kind of don't recommend that just because, like I said, if your if your hard drive crashes while you're saving your project, you have another location that is saving your pro that is auto saving your project files. The only danger with this is if you take your project and you move to a different location. If you take your hard drive and you go to a different computer and then you try to access those autosave files, they're not going to be there. So you just kind of have to decide if you want to save it to your own if you want to save it to your own hard drive that you're working on or save it to a separate hard drive. Right now I've got a hard drive plugged in and that's a different location than the C drive that I'm working on than the main uh, system drive that I'm working on. What I really recommend, this this is what I do. I always leave the same as project. It'll save it in the same location as my as my project file in the same folder. But then when I am done editing, I will pretty much always, I have a place on my Google Drive with my Gmail, I'll go to my Gmail, to Google Drive, and I have a folder that I have that I name Project Files. And uh, every time I get finished editing, and if it's a, especially if it's an important edit, I will take the saved project file, the most recent version, and upload it to Google Drive to back that up to make sure I have another copy of it. You should always back, back up your project files, you should always always back up your media as well if you have a, a lot of media and you have it in one location you're kind of playing with danger I, uh, kind of a mantra that I've heard that I, I live by is if you don't have three copies if you don't have three copies of something it doesn't exist so figure out how you want to back up your projects is a good idea to buy multiple pro it's a good idea to buy multiple hard drives as well and and back up your entire projects to different hard drives and sometimes if you're working out of one folder and you're adding media to that folder, uh, I'd recommend getting something like a checksum software that actually, uh, when you back up your software or backing up software, that when you add media to it, you can tell it to just take the new files that you've added to that folder or delete it out of that folder and basically make the backup folder uh, exactly the same as your, as, your project, as your project folder that you've got. So a checksum software or a backup software is kind of the way to go uh, if, if you need to back up uh, uh, files. Uh, quite often. Well, let's take a look at our autosave folder here. I'm going to go to the same location as my uh, as I'm going to go to the same location here as uh, my project file where is it where it's saved. Here we are in my folder here, my project folder. I'm going to move. I'm going to look up here and notice I've got Adobe Premiere autosave. I double click on that. It's going to have a long list of files. Uh, this is an older project, of course. You can see this way, dates way back to two, 2016, but you can see this list of project files that has been backing up, and everyone has a unique name. It adds a new number on the end of your autosave file, has a new name on each project file, and then you got the time next to it when it did it. And every three minutes, it was saving this project file. So I have several different versions of this. It's basically like a history of all the versions that I have. So I'm going to do a quick little test here. I'm going to delete a file and say this is kind of unintentional. I'm going to delete this file right here, hit delete, and let's say I unintentionally deleted that and later on I didn't notice until later. And, and once you keep in mind that when you uh, save your project and you close your software, you can no longer undo back to the spots. Uh, what that basically does is gets rid of all of your undo options, which I've gone over in a previous episode which I went over in the previous episode. It gets rid of all that history, went over all the undo options. Uh, so when you open it up, you're kind of stuck with that. If I, if, I, if I deleted that file, and now I'm going to close Premiere and open it back up. So yes, I'm going to save my changes. And I reopen Premiere, and I'm going to open my same project. And now I notice, uh-oh, that, that clip is gone, and I didn't mean to delete that. If I go under my history here, my history has been wiped out. Every time you close down the software and you open it back up, your history has completely disappeared. You no longer have undo options. I mean, I can every day start creating new moves. Uh, then I will have undo options that start writing over here. But every time you close it and open it, uh, you've lost what you've done. You can't, I can't undo and get back to that. So now what I have to do to save that and find where that edit was, where that clip was, is I have to go to my autosave vault here. I'm going to go to that folder. I'm going to do it by, by date modified. And here is the most recent one right there um, that I saved. And here I've got a couple versions of autosave one of auto, auto save items here that were saved. Uh, they used to do it by numbering like this, but now lately, this is kind of smart, they do it by date and time. On the more, more recent versions, you've got right here it says that I've saved that my, this project file was saved on December 8th, 2019. And over here is the time. And it's got it down to the second. Military time, 20 hours, 37, 37 minutes, and 54 seconds. So it's got the exact same time, the exact time that those were saved. I can go to the more re recent one right here and go to the, uh, the most recent one, double click, and 
Open that up, and what you'll notice here is as it opens up, here's that project tab for the autosave. Here is the project tab for my original file, for the file that I'm actually working on. And he, and this is this can be a little bit confusing because it's got all these timelines in here uh, from both projects that are now open, because both these projects are now open. There's one project tab, there's the other. So I'm going to go under this one called Industrial Spot for my original project and see what's missing. And this, I can even look at the time code here. So I can go to this exact spot in this timeline here. I'm going to move my uh, playhead right to that line there. And this time code is at 207.05. I can click on this timeline. I can cut, copy it and go over to the industrial spot. I can go over to the autosave industrial spot. I can type in that time and click in this time code here and paste that time code and click on that time code here and paste that time code. Control V to paste, hit enter, it jumps to that, and here's the clip that I need right there. I can select that, do Control C to copy, go back to my other previous timeline, to Control V to paste, and I have restored that clip back to my original project. Now I can go back to my autosave, right click on it, and say close project. And I'm not going to save the changes to that, I'm going to say no. And now here are my, here's my original project file, and that has been restored. I've got that clip back. Uh, you can do this like with entire sequences. You can do this with uh, pretty much anything that you used to have in your project that you might have mistakenly gotten rid of. Anyway, so good idea to configure your uh, your autosave feature there, so you can sit back up your project files as you're as you're editing, and uh, then that way, if you need to, you can go back and grab those and restore uh, things that might might have been lost in the past. Or even if your project crashes, you can go back and uh, save a lot of time by opening up one of your more re one of your more recent autosave files. So, if you have any questions, please post them. And thanks for watching.